Hi, Brent Tech here, where tech is made simple. So about two weeks ago, I let you know that Windows 11 25H2 was getting very close to public release, which is going to be this year's annual feature update because Microsoft had rolled it out to the release preview channel Insiders, which is just before it rolls out to Stable. I'll leave that video linked for what it's worth if you'd like some more info. Now, just to let you know that late on Friday in my part of the world, Microsoft rolled out the next optional bug fix C release update, which will be rolling out for both Windows 11 24H2 and 25H2, which is KB5065789. So this is in final testing in the release preview channel before it makes its way to the stable. And the reason why the update is made available for both versions of Windows is because, as I've mentioned previously, 25H2 is going to be enabled using an enablement package. And Windows 11 24H2 and 25H2 will be getting the same features for the current time being. And because it's in final preview, if we head to the calendar, that optional update will start rolling out in the final week of September. And if you don't install the optional update in the final week of September, because it is optional, those improvements and fixes and new features will roll out on the second Tuesday, the 14th of October. And there's lots going on on the 14th of October. So that's going to be a busy day for Microsoft because that's also when Windows 10 is receiving its final cumulative update according to Microsoft. So in effect, the new features we're going to go through now and the changes and improvements are most probably going to be what's rolling out with 25H2 as this year's annual feature update. Now there's a lot going on and there are 19 new features rolling out. All the new features and most of the fixes are all rolling out gradually. So you may see these at the get-go, you may not when it comes to stable as 25H2. So first of all, starting with a couple of Copilot plus PC features, I'm just going to mention these. There's a new click to do feature where you can now detect tables. So Microsoft says you can now highlight any simple table and send it to Excel, copy or share it with the table in any application. You can press win and click to invoke click to do or win and Q or right swipe and tap to select the table. Once selected, you'll see the actions you can take like convert to table with Excel. Microsoft says just click capture and continue. This is available on Snapdragon powered Copilot Plus PCs with support for AMD and Intel powered Copilot Plus PCs coming soon. And then the next new feature is apparently Microsoft says there's new and popular action tags in the click to do context menu, which will help you discover the latest and most widely used AI powered actions. And then another click to do feature rolling out is it now provides more concise summaries with a summarize action. So those are all rolling out to Copilot Plus PCs. And then there's another new feature for Copilot Plus PCs where a direct navigation link to the corresponding settings page is now available from agent search results. And that's the AI agent in settings as we have been talking about on the channel. Now there's a new feature rolling out which I have spoken about previously on the channel where you can now move the hardware indicators for brightness, volume, and airplane mode and virtual desktops to different positions on your screen. And apparently this has been a highly requested feature, being able to move those indicators to different positions on your screen. And Microsoft says to change the position, you would go to settings, system notifications, and then pick from the options in the position of the on-screen pop-up in the drop-down list, as we can see in the image provided. So that's apparently a highly requested feature. Then just to mention the next, IT administrators no longer need to restart explorer.exe to apply the pin-in policy. So that's for enterprise environments. That's also listed as a new feature. And the next new feature is regarding AI actions in File Explorer, which can be used to edit images or summarize documents. Microsoft says you would just right click on the file and select AI actions, 
This, Microsoft says, is not yet available for customers in the EEA, European Economic Area. And then the next new improvement is the File Explorer, Microsoft says, the context menu, if we just head into that quickly, has been updated to remove the accent colored backplate behind packaged app icons in the open with list when right clicking a file. So as an example, if we right click, we head to open with, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but as an example, snipping tool, paint, they've got the little colored backplate. Now that's going to be removed according to Microsoft. And apparently in doing this, the icon should be easier to see now. And I actually think that's a very small but yet significant little change when it comes to the UI. I've never liked those backplates behind those icons when it comes to packaged apps. Microsoft says it's also made underlying changes to help improve the performance of launching cloud files from File Explorer and loading context menus. The next is a fix where icons and text may become overlapping on the desktop when using increased text scaling. And if we just head back to File Explorer, Microsoft says it's fixed icons in the details, preview and navigation panes that weren't properly mirrored when using an Arabic or Hebrew display language. And then just to mention the next new feature, Microsoft says you can now pin your favorite apps in the Windows Share window to quickly access them when you need them. And I think that's also a nice improvement if you are using Windows Share. Here's another new feature where we are getting Emoji 16. With Microsoft saying that this release includes a small but meaningful set of new emoji. So that would be face with bags, under eyes, fingerprint, vegetables, leafless tree, hop, shovel, and splatter. Microsoft mentions that these new emoji are designed to resonate across cultures and contexts. You'll find them in the emoji panel starting with this build. So that's new emoji 16. And the next one is new advanced settings. The redesigned advanced settings page, which is found under settings system advanced, Microsoft says is an update of the four developers page and makes it easier to find key options. And then just to mention the next new feature, which is automatic super resolution, also known as auto SR, which Microsoft says is rolling out to help gamers improve visual quality with minimal effort through simplified settings. So when a supported game is launched, Windows displays a notification that allows users to turn on Auto SR with a single click. And for the next new feature, I'm just going to head over to my notepad because this can get quite confusing. So just to give you a bit of a visual representation, Microsoft says you can now insert dashes with new keyboard shortcuts. So you can quickly insert an N dash or M dash while typing. And how you would do this is you would press the logo key and minus to insert an N dash and Windows logo key and shift and minus to insert an M dash. If magnifier is running, Windows logo key and hyphen will zoom out magnifier instead of inserting an N dash. And for the next fix, Microsoft says, after waking a PC from sleep, touch input may not work to enter your PIN on the logging screen. So, And then just to mention two improvements which are listed as new features for Narrator. Narrator now includes Braille Viewer, which shows both on-screen text and its Braille equivalent on a refreshable Braille display. And Narrator now offers a smoother, more natural experience in Word with improved voice feedback, reliable continuous reading, and better navigation for footnotes, comments, lists and tables, says Microsoft. And then the next new feature, Microsoft says you can now use a credential plugin manager for pass keys. And to set up a plugin credential manager, you would go to settings, accounts, pass keys, and you will see a new advanced options appear on this page. And sticking in settings, the next new feature is Microsoft says the manage or clear your Bing search history, 
which is found under settings, privacy and security, search, search history. Manage or clear your Bing search history has been removed. And you can now manage your Bing search history from the privacy dashboard accessible via the privacy resources link under related settings on that settings page. So you would find that right at the bottom here. Privacy dashboard, you'd click on that and that will take you now online to your Microsoft account where you can clear your Bing search history. And there are more control panel features coming to settings. So if we head over to settings, time and language, date and time, you can now add additional clocks, change your time server and customize date and time formatting including AM PM symbols directly from this page when it does roll out as a new feature. And Microsoft also says that number and currency formats, Unicode UTF-8 support and options to copy language and region settings to other accounts are now under settings, time and language, language and region. So that'll be on this page when it rolls out. And keyboard character repeat and cursor blink rate settings are now easier to find under settings accessibility. So that's a whole lot of control panel features moving over into the new settings and I have actually posted a separate video on that. And if we head to settings, apps, installed apps, Microsoft says it's made underlying changes to help improve the performance of loading the apps list and, and I think that's a nice move because this can feel quite sluggish when those apps in the app list do load. And I'm just going to mention the next one. It's a bug fix where Microsoft says settings, system storage and disk volumes might show a link for BitLocker drive encryption in unsupported cases. So that's an under the hood fix, which is quite important. And then just to mention the next new feature and improvement for gaming. Xbox controller support for gaming on Windows 11 has been improved. Short pressing the Xbox button opens game bar. And a new change Microsoft says it's introducing is when you long press the Xbox button, it will open task view. And pressing and holding the Xbox button continues to turn off the game controller. And then there's an improvement where Microsoft says it's made some underlying changes to help improve performance when gaming with Game Bar or other overlays on top of your game. And then the next new feature is several dialogues including the one that appears when an app fails to open, have been modernized with WinUR 3 and match the visuals for Windows 11. And I'm just going to mention the next couple of fixes just to get through these quickly. There's a fix for dynamic lighting where apparently the background controller may occasionally consume excessive CPU after unlocking your PC. So that's a performance improvement. And there's a voice access fix where voice access may get stuck in a state where it says it's listening but is stuck and doesn't respond. There's a Windows Hello fix where Microsoft says you may unexpectedly see a message saying something happened and your PIN isn't available when attempting to enter safe mode. And there's a fix for Sandbox when it's enabled. It may consume large amounts of CPU after login, causing your PC to become unresponsive. So that's a nice improvement fix there. And there's a fix for HDR where it may unexpectedly immediately turn off after being enabled in settings. And there's a quick settings fix where if you enter a pin for your device to cast from quick settings, pressing enter may pressing enter wouldn't confirm the pin. So those are all under the hood kind of fixes rolling out. And then We've got three fixes taking place under the hood that are rolling out normally. So basically, 99.9% .9 of this next optional update is rolling out gradually, including the 19 new features. So quite a lot going on. And this is more or less, guys, what we can expect to see when 25H2 rolls out to the general public starting next month. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.